Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 2 from Module 4 in the Math 6. And Lesson 2 is covering the relationship of multiplication and division. So the classwork opening exercise says to draw a pictorial representation of the division and multiplication problems using a tape diagram. So I'm going to look at the first number here and make a tape diagram with eight squares. Okay, so there's my tape diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now it's saying divide by two. So all that means is to make two sets of four. So if I divide that by two, now there's two pieces of the tape diagram that are equal in size, and they each have four squares. So eight divided by two. In the next diagram, it says multiply three times two. So I want a tape diagram with the first number, which is represented by three squares. Number three is three squares. So there's my tape diagram with three squares. And times two means that I want to duplicate my tape diagram and I will draw this one below, same length, same size pieces. And so now I have two tape diagrams of length three. So I have three, two times. So it's three times two equals six. Okay, so now the exploratory challenge says work in pairs or small groups to determine equations to show the relationship between multiplication and division. Use tape diagrams to provide support of your findings and create two equations to show relationships between multiplication and division. These equations should be identities and include variables. Okay, so the key word here is identity. All right, so in class, we had students come up with some examples, and one of them was 6 divided by 2 times 2 equals 6. Okay, this is just feeding off of um, lesson one, where we did it with addition and subtraction, and that's what this was talking about. So I had, had made it more clear than what these ex examples ask for. Um, and I related it to lesson one and said that we are doing the same thing in lesson, as, as in lesson one, but instead of addition and subtraction, we are now doing multiplication and division. Okay, so then I will review with you the term PEMDAS. Okay, and some teachers use GEMDAS, where P is parentheses, and P is parentheses, and G is grouping. Okay, so that just tells us our order of operations, where this is parentheses, this is exponents, this is a multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay? And there's a rule that if we are, have only multiplication or only division, that we work left to right. But we're doing this. So if you look down at this problem here, I have division and multiplication. Since I only have those two operations, doing the M and the D portion of GEMDAS or PEMDAS, and it says work left to right. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 times 2 equals 6. Okay. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and when I take that 3 and multiply it by 2 again, I get back to what I started. So another example could be 8 the times, now I'm going to do a multiplication problem, 8 times 3 divided by 3 equals 8. So if I do the first step first, 8 times 3 is 24. 24 divided by 3 equals 8. And we got back this time. So then they had to create an equation relationship using variables. Okay, so now it says to include variables. So if I said A times B 
divided by B equals A. Or I could say A divided by B times B equals A. So this is representing the inverse operation. And then it says, write your equations on large paper. Show a series of tape diagrams to defend each of your equations. We did not get to do that with the amount of time that was allotted for the period. So we finished at this point here. But I do want to explain more what's going on here before we end. So... If I have a number, 5 times 4, and then I divide it by 4, I get back to what I started with. Because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I'm just going to take out that little middle piece there. 4 divided by 4 equals 1. And that is our multiplicative identity. And an identity just simply means the number that we use to multiply by something, or multiply something by, and we get the same answer. So if I said 5 times 1, that equals 5. 10 times 1 equals 10. 1,000 times 1 equals 1,000. So since my number doesn't change, okay, we call that the identity. We're not changing its identity its makeup. So the multiplicative identity is 1, and when we do the multiplicative inverse, it gives us the multiplicative identity, which does not change the inequality or equation we are working on. So no matter what order I do this in, since this piece here is an I, is the inverse of each other, but 4 divided by 4 is, is basically the same as saying 4 over 1 times 1 over 4, because we divide, it's the same as multiplying by its inverse, and 4 times 1 is 4, and 1 times 4 is 4, and anything divided by itself is 4. Multiple ways to look at this it can be confusing. But once you identify that the inverse of multiplication is a reciprocal of the original number, or dividing by that same number, it yields the identity, which is 1. And no matter what we multiply by, 1 by, we get that same thing back. And that was the whole concept of this lesson. Okay, that is the end of lesson 2. Go do your problem set.